Hey what's up guys my name is Praetorian and welcome back to my Hearts of Iron 4 beginner guide. Now in this video we're going to be covering air forces in a little bit more detail than before. Uh, we already did a land unit one and then after that we did a, a naval unit video so I thought that it was fitting to go ahead and do a uh, more focused video for air units as well and just to kind of wrap up this theme that we've been doing for the last couple videos. So in part five we're going to be covering air units, air wings, uh, carriers, air missions, and anything else regarding air forces that we may need to cover. And similar to the last video, I'm going to go ahead and put some timestamps down in the description so that you can skip to any part that you may wish, just in case you're looking for a particular topic. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to go ahead and cover the air units, uh, cover the planes. I think that'd be a fitting place to start. Uh, first plane up here is the Close Air Support Unit. Now, close air support, we can see what they do uh, based on the name and the tooltip. They are the best planes for helping your uh, land units out in combat, you know, basically bombing the enemy uh, land units. So when we go into air missions, we'll look at the several different air missions that planes can have. Uh, but the most importantly, these guys are going to do the best at the close air support air mission. Uh, but they can do other things as well. They can do the naval, naval strike, but they're not going to be as good as naval bombers. And they can also do the port strike mission. And once again, not going to be as good as naval bombers. Bombers. Now the close air support are smaller planes. If you look at the tech tree, this side of the tech tree are the smaller planes. This, is, these are the larger planes. And as expected from a smaller plane, they're going to have a lower manpower cost, and they're also going to have a much higher agility than some of the larger planes, uh, which allows them to avoid being hit by other planes uh, when they're shooting at them. Uh, but some of the negatives are they're going to have a lower operational range. However, like I said, you're going to get the lower production cost, the lower manpower, and you're going to, these are the best planes for helping out your land units. As you see, the ground attack here is very nice. And the addition of them being able to help out uh, in naval strikes and stuff is just a little added bonus if you don't want to invest in naval bombers. Now, fighters are just what you, you would expect them to be. They are the best planes for destroying the enemy's uh, bombers and their other fighters. These fighters are going to be key in order to gain air superiority, and then you can also use interception mission. Now, there's two kind of fighters. There's the smaller regular fighter, and then we have the heavy fighter here. And let me move this so we can click on these here. Uh, as you see, that the manpower cost and the production is going to be a lot lower for the the smaller fighters, which is as to be expected. Um, but the larger fighters are faster and have a higher operational range. Uh, the heavy fighters are also going to have a better air attack ability. However. Uh, the smaller planes uh, have the higher agility. The main thing that you're going to want to, you're probably going to use fighters for most operations. What you're going to want to use heavy fighters for is their range. That's the key here. They do cost a lot more production, so you don't want to make them your main fighter. Uh, however, the, the problem with the fighters is their operational range is so small that they really can't cover the areas that you're going to need them to. Uh, it, when you first, this basic fighter, when you start the game, uh, they can't even cover some air, uh, air regions that are right next to the airport that they're into. You're in, in one air region and airport. They are, they sometimes can't even cover the region that's right next to them. So, I mean, the range is very, very short. Which means that they're not going to be able to protect some of these larger bombers, your strategic and your tactical bombers, that are going to be bombing enemy units quite far away. So it basically requires that you have the heavy fighters in order to protect them and gain air superiority in any kind of region that's farther away. And the range problem does become less of a problem as you upgrade your fighters. Uh, we'll get up to 1,000 air. Um, but yeah, the, the beginning at 700 is really, really low. And by the way, I'm not going to go over all these because they're very, very self-explanatory. So I figure you guys can get that. The other major difference here with the planes on this side is that they can be uh, put onto Air Force carriers. Uh, as you notice, these ones can't. It's this little button here. Now, you have to research this. This is the problem, and I brought this up in a previous video. This is something I've seen a lot of people have issues with. I had issues with it when I first started playing the game. I couldn't figure out how to put planes on my Air Force carriers. Well, this is how you have to do it. You have to research. It's a separate type of plane. It's a kind of a, a modified version version of the plane and you have to research this on its own luckily it is a lot easier to research and then you have to have its own production line to build that specific type of fighter that can uh, go onto air force carriers now naval bombers are the best plane when it comes to the naval attack they're the best ones at doing damage to planes however one thing that i noticed while playing is that the naval targeting of the uh, naval bomber for this first model is actually lower than the naval targeting for the close air support so that's something interesting to note that they actually and the naval targeting is the ability to hit the ship 
So it's your, your accuracy, while the naval attack is how much damage you're going to be doing. So while they do more damage, uh, they're less likely to hit, which is a little bit concerning. And then it takes it takes you to get down to this next model here just to get the same na naval targeting as the uh, uh, first close air support. So that is something to note. However, they do have much longer range than close air support, which you're probably going to want when you're trying to protect air uh, or trying to uh, protect sea areas. Another thing to note is that the naval bombers cannot perform any other missions but the naval strike and the port strike. Uh, unlike this close air support, you can see the close air support is actually has a lot of utility to it. You know, it's not a bad naval bomber and it has the ability to do that as well. So sometimes when you're short on materials and production, uh, this can be the best bet is to just focus on close air support. That's just one thing I've found. Uh, naval bombers though are really overpowered. I found that they are extremely powerful when it comes to that naval attack. So uh, you may want to invest in these if you want to gain control of the seas or if you're just trying to lessen the effects of, of a superior uh, enemy's navy. Then you have the tactical bombers. Now being a larger plane they are going to require more manpower and more production costs. However they have very very good air defense. They have some of the best air defense you're going to find other than really the, the strategic bombers. Uh, you know they also have very very good air defense. Uh, their agility is going to be lower because of their, their size. However they have a very good operational range. Just all around the tactical bombers are very very good. I really like tactical bombers. Uh, their naval attack is also really good. But one negative to them is they cannot perform the uh, naval strike ability. They can do the close air support, and when it comes to their ground attack, it's not as good as close air support. Those are really the best for uh, uh, attacking ground forces, but it is not bad at all. And they can use this naval attack ability in the port strike mission that they're capable of doing. And most importantly, these guys can do strategic bombing. Uh, there, there's only two types of planes that can do that, tactical bombers and strategic bombers. And we'll go over missions later, as I said, but this is uh, one important thing to note. They're a very well-balanced uh, plane. I really like using tactical bombers. If you can afford to invest in them, then I would suggest doing so, just because of their versatility. Their versatility makes them very, very useful. Last naval unit here is the strategic bomber, and they can only do strategic bombing. However, as you can see, they are very, very good at it, uh, way better than the tactical bombers. However, this is a very large plane, so they're going to require lots of manpower, uh, going to have a very high production cost. Uh, the, the air defense is going to be uh, higher due, due to the fact that they're a larger plane, but their agility is very, very, very small. And they also have good operational range, but you'll see it's the same as the tactical bomber. I mean, if you really want to focus on strategic bombing, then you can invest in building them, and they can be very useful. There's nobody else that can do the strategic bombing quite as well as them. If that's how you're planning on kind of trying to win the war is through the use of strategic bombing, then you're going to want to invest in these. But I have found that tactical bombers have served that purpose for me quite well. I usually just use them for my strategic bombing, unless I'm playing as a specific country. Um, perhaps like uh, when I'm in the UK, I like using strategic bombers. But I mean, other than that, I mean, it's it's the tactical bomber like i said is very very uh, versatile it can do a lot of these jobs you know it can you know bomb land units it can do strategic bombing it can do some port strikes so i mean it can do a lot of the jobs that the other uh, bombers can do uh, just not as well uh, they're more specialized so it's the, basically like the jack of all trades the master of none all right and that's that's it guys for our planes uh, we could go in here the, this is once you research jet engines you'll get the jet uh fighters and bombers and those are pretty cool to have too but those are much later in the game so let's go ahead and take a look at air wings. Now this, what I'm about to show you is a really a personal preference thing. Uh, something I like to do when I first start a campaign. I like to know where all my planes are. I like to have been the one to set them up. I also don't like how they, the uh, base air wings start out with these weird numbers. Uh, you know, 72-4. I mean, they just start at weird numbers. Uh, so what I like to do, and this, like I said, a personal preference, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys, is I like to go ahead and select all these units, which you can do through shift left click. As soon as I start, these are all of our air wings, which we got to this by clicking on the air tab up here. But you see what it's done? It has selected all the air wings for us, and this allows me to just get them all, get rid of them all. I'm gonna get just trash can them all. This doesn't destroy them. This sends them all back to the reserves, and there is a quicker way to do this. We can do this. Uh, his enter here, and just knock all of these out here. Send them all back to the reserves. This is how I like to start every single one of my campaigns. So that I'm in full control of how my air wings are set up. You'll see we have no air wings now. And then this will allow me to place the uh, planes exactly where I'm going to need them. And really the only negative of, do of doing this is it does take a few days. Well really it matters on uh, the distance, how far away it is from your capital. 
on how long it's going to take. Uh, it takes a matter of hours usually for a lot of the places in your country. Uh, but if you go far away, it's going to take days to get the planes over there sometimes, uh, like in you know on another continent. But yeah, there it is that negative that is going to take time for the planes to actually get to it when you once you set it up. But if you do it well before your conflict starts, you should be fine. So of course, the most important map mode for uh, Air Forces is F3 the strategic air map mode and this shows us all of our air regions but before we move on to that we need to create some air wings and you see these little plane looking things on the ground here these are our airports we just go ahead and click one of these then we're going to click this button here to create a new air wing and you'll see a list of all of our available equipment even our older equipment outdated equipment now we haven't unlocked the new fighters yet so we're going to build some uh, interwar fighter uh, you can control click to move 10 or shift click to move 100 uh, we're going to move 100 now when it comes to the size of your air wings guys each one of these airports can carry each level of airport can carry up to 200 planes so level one's 200 level six here is 1200 airplanes so i found that i like to usually create my air wings to be like 100 or 200 uh planes a piece you can always create larger but then it is going to be harder to move them to another uh, airport for instance if you're moving from here and you have a 400 air wing and you're trying to move it to like africa or something like that where you don't have as large a, of uh, airports then it could end up being a problem so i've just found that it could be easier doing 100 to 200 it really depends on what you need and of course if you were in like East Africa maybe you only need 25 planes and that will work as well now you do not have to have all the equipment available to build the air wing of the size that you want so let's say we only had a hundred of these interwar fighters and we wanted to have a air wing that was 200 strong we can just use this uh, this button here to go ahead and make a larger air wing and once we get the planes available they will be sent to this air wing and they'll reinforce up to 200 as soon as we have the planes for them to do so and one other thing to note here is this is the cost of your manpower this is how much manpower this is going to cost to uh keep this air wing going here and then we select OK. And as I said before, it is going to take them a little while to deploy. Uh, it's going to take them to 2200, uh, I think, this day here. We're going to go ahead and create some more air wings at this location. We're going to build, actually, we want bombers up here at this location. And you'll notice the difference between the air. Let's go ahead and close these. Between the airports, this lets you know you have planes here. While well, if it's black over here, then we don't have any planes there at all. And we're just going to go ahead and move some of these guys over here. We're going to go ahead and put some naval bombers up here to uh, fight the British forces that I'm sure are going to be uh, patrolling the Baltic Sea. Let's go ahead and just throw 50 in there. That'll work. And then we'll go back down to this one. We're going to go ahead and get some fighters to gain air superiority over Poland. Oh, we, we put fighters there already. So let's go ahead and put some tactical bombers. There we go. We should just do 100. Do that. And then we're going to move all of those over there for our close air support. And finally, let's go with some, I guess, some interwar bombers. Why not? Let's just throw them over here. Let's throw 50 over there. And then also, I didn't cover this before because they don't have a technology for it, but transport planes, they are used for your uh, paratroopers to uh, para drops. Let's go ahead and drop that in there. And then let's get let all these guys get in here. We're going to fast forward a bit up to whenever, I guess. It should be good. That should be good. They should all be deployed. Yep, they are all deployed over here, and we are good to go over here. All right, so let's take a look at what we see on this screen. Now, a lot of this stuff at the top is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go over that. Uh, but let's take a look at one of these, these uh, bombers here. Now, we can click on the plane to get the specific statistics of this, uh, this type of plane here. We can click right here to select an ace pilot to assign one of our ace pilots, and I believe I covered that in another video. But just to briefly cover it, uh, planes do not have experience like ships and uh, divisions do. Instead, they gain the chance to gain an ace while they're in combat. And aces, they all have uh, like specific specialties, and this determines the type of air wings that they can be assigned to. So this this one here can only be assigned to uh, fighters, and they're going to have a little special stats that they're going to increase for that entire air wing. So uh, uh, aces can be very very useful. Aces can die. I had a question about that uh, recently. Aces can die. So if their plane gets shot down, then they, they'll die. So that's how we assign aces. This is the priority for this air wing, the priority for equipment. We can put them low priority, so the last ones to get the new equipment, or we put them a high priority if this is you know, where our front is. We're going to want them to get the newest fighters first. 
Now, another question I've had asked me before is these lines here. Uh, they can be yellow or you see no lines or red. This is your coverage. This is how well they're able to cover the area that they are in. Uh, these bombers, the tactical bombers, you know, they have very good range. Uh, same, with, same with the naval bombers. Um, so they're able to cover their entire area that they're assigned to right now. Well, you'll notice that the close air support and fighters have this yellow. This, this is telling us that they are not able to cover, uh, completely cover the area that they're in. Now, if it's red, then that means that they're not able to cover at all. Their range does not allow them to cover uh, barely any of that area. More than likely because you assigned them to an area that's very far away from the air base that they are stationed at, so they, they cannot reach it. So that's one thing of note. So this screen right here just shows us what's in these particular airports that we have selected. We want to assign them to an area. Right now, they're not assigned to any area, so we cannot give them missions or anything. So all of these guys, we're going to go ahead and assign them to the Western Poland front. And we just do that by right-clicking. Then we're going to go back to our naval bomber here, and we're going to assign that naval bomber to the Baltic Sea. And now we can go ahead and close those, and when we click on these areas, you're now going to see that we have the planes assigned to that area. Now this top screen is a breakdown of the area, everything that's going on, all of the, the planes and anti-air guns that are assigned to there, as well, as well as the radar efficiency that you have. And this is your side, and this is the enemy side. And um, this is who has air superiority. As it fills up uh, green, you know, it's telling you you have air superiority, and as it goes this way, red, it's telling you the enemy has air superiority. This will also tell you the weather modifiers in there, as well as you know, whether it's uh, nighttime or daytime. One screen that you're probably going to use a lot to see how uh, how well your Air Force has been doing is this details screen right here. This shows you for this entire area, you know, all the information you're going to need to know. Uh, the buildings that have been bombed from, from uh, other enemy bombers, uh, troops bombed, ships bombed, all that good stuff. How many of your fighters have been shot? How many fighters you have shot? How many bombers you've shot? How many bombers disrupted? This is all information that you're going to need to know. To, to be able to accurately assess uh, you know, what's going on in this uh, re in this air region. A lot of people have asked, like, how do I know if I'm winning the air war? How do I know if I'm doing well? Uh, this this screen right here is going to tell you if you're doing well. Have you shot down more fighters than of theirs, or have they shot down more fighters of yours? Are you disrupting their bombers? Are you d destroying their bombers? How much any of their bombers are getting through and bombing your buildings and troops? And this screen right here is going to tell you everything you need to know to in, or in order to decide whether you need to assign more fighters to here or more bombers or whatever you may need to do. Maybe you need to build more anti-air units because this whole area is just getting bombed to hell. So this statistics screen is very useful and you sort by the days, months, years, and you'll see there's a little graph when we select these. You'll see a little graph that kind of shows you uh, so that you can tell whether you're improving or whether things are actually getting worse. So this is very, very useful for determining uh, what's going on in the air war and what you need to do to fix things and gain air superiority. Now let's take a look at that down here. Now I did cover these in previous videos, but we're going to go over it again. Now, this one thing I don't understand, why they are, are the default setting here is no retreat. That doesn't make any sense. This is the setting for when they stop doing missions uh, for after they've received a certain amount of casualties. It's set so that they'll keep doing missions until they have no more planes. I don't really understand that. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I like to keep it on normal. Uh, that's It's called normal. It should probably be the default setting. Uh, and that'll basically make them do the wish missions until they're at 25% strength. We can also do a low intensity and at 50% strength uh, or lower than 50% strength, they will uh, stop conducting missions. We can also determine when, at what times our planes are going to conduct missions, day and night, just day or just at night. Now, the difference between day and night, during daytime, it is easier for your fighters to shoot down other planes and easier for your bombers to hit targets on the ground. However, it's also easier for you know other fighters to shoot down your planes as well as anti-air to shoot down your planes. So that's one. That's the negative of the day and the positive of the day. And nighttime is the exact opposite. Uh, it's your planes are less likely to get hit by uh, enemies, uh, anti-air, and their their fighters. However, it's also going to be more difficult for them to hit their targets. For the most part, I usually keep things on day and light, and day and night, unless I'm specifically trying to do uh, some kind of certain tactic or something. Uh, but day and night usually works. But if you find that you're losing a lot of bombers and a lot of fighters, you're having a lot of trouble with that, then sometimes just setting to like night bombings can be uh, very useful. Now this little button over here is just telling us our mission efficient efficiency. Uh, you'll notice that these two are green while these two are yellow. That's once again those yellow stripes you saw. The main reason that we're, our mission efficiency has been decreased is because we're lacking the range to completely cover the area. What's really interesting about this here is that it's telling you how much uh, of the area you're not able to cover. So these fighters are not able to cover 30% while these close air support are not able to carry, cover 10%. That's really not that bad. This is, this is fine. They can cover most of that area. Now let's go into 
to the air missions. Now, close air support mission. This can be done by tactical bombers and the close air support planes. And this is well, exactly what it, it says here in the tooltip is it's used to assist your divisions in ground combat. So this can be very, very useful, especially when you're on offensive, trying to break through an area uh, to, to be, soften them up. And just it really improves. And, and having air superiority also has a modifier associated with it, which will increase your division's ability to fight and decrease the enemy division's abilities to fight. And you gain air support by having your fighters. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but yeah, air support, very useful. Strategic bombing is for bombing all the, the factories, the infrastructure in enemies' provinces. Now, this can be useful for a variety of things. If you damage their factories, then it's going to damage your enemy's ability to be able to build uh, new equipment, new ships, uh, to be able to do uh, new construction. So it could be quite useful to uh, bomb their factories. Also, infrastructure is very important for supply, so you can help decrease the supply in an area for the enemy by bombing their infrastructure. And it's also going to make them slower to be able to move through that area. Overall, strategic bombing can be very useful in the long run. One thing to note about strategic bombing though is you might not want to bomb an area that you're about to take over because then you're going to have to repair all that, all the stuff that you bomb there. That makes it a little bit less useful. So the next mission up is the port strike which can be done by the tactical bombers, the close air support, and the naval bombers. Uh, port strike bombs enemy fleets in the ports. This is extremely powerful guys. Very, very, very powerful. You can completely destroy fleets inside of ports. It's amazingly powerful. Uh, they may nerf it. Maybe not. I don't know. But it's very useful to use when you know that they have uh, uh, ships within those ports in that, that, uh, in that air region. And then finally we have the naval strike ability. This is the last one for the bombers here. And this can be done by the close air support as well as the naval bombers. And this is going to damage ships that are actually out here on the water doing missions and such. Now our fighters have two missions. Uh, they have air superiority and interception. Now the difference here is air superiority, they're going to focus on fighting fighters and bombers second. So uh, you know if there's a bombers flying in the area and, and fighters, they're going to fight the fighters first. And interception is the exact opposite. They're going to focus on fighting the bombers first and then the fighters. Now you can also select multiple missions. So if we wanted them to do it now, there wouldn't be much of a reason to do this unless you just you want them to fight everybody. Uh, it j but doing this just basically makes them less efficient at what they're doing because they're going to be focusing on doing more than one thing at once. So they're not really going to be able to focus on that one uh, mission that you assign them. But if that's what you want to do, you can certainly do that. Sometimes it can be helpful with the port strike and the naval. So if we're on our naval bomber here, uh, we may want to... Uh, you know, do both naval strike and port strike if we don't really know if their uh, navies are out here doing missions or if they're in port. So it could be useful to do that. Let's go ahead and just assign some missions here. We're going to do uh, uh, some strategic bombing there, close air support, close air support, and air superiority. And we're good, good to go. And now you can see, just like with our naval missions, uh, the amount of planes that are doing each mission here. And when we click on those, we'll be able to select a particular, any one of these particular air wings that are doing that mission. And of course, that's just going to send us to here. But it is useful for seeing exactly which ones are doing the missions. And this bottom half is just showing us, you know, all the list of uh, air wings that we have going. And we can do empty air bases as well. And then we can just specify exactly where we want to look. So carriers or rocket sites or even allied bases if you have your airplane stationed on air on allied air bases and that is actually one thing I wanted to cover in this video because some people don't didn't know about that is that you can put your uh, airplanes in allied air bases which can be very useful when I'm playing as the UK I like to bring my planes over here to help fight uh, Germany since you can't really reach them at the, at the beginning of the war usually from your own airports so yeah you definitely want to make use of your allied uh, airports now how do we move units uh, like I said, you can always just get rid of the air wing and uh, then assign the planes from the stockpile to the uh, new airport that you want to. Or if you wanted to, you could exactly you could just you know click on the uh, the the air wing that you want to move, and then just click on the, the uh, airport you want them to move to, and then they'll move there. And the time that it takes to do so will be based on the distance between those two areas. And that's all you have to do to move your air wings. And the same thing when you like to when you want to move the uh, area that an air wing is in. They're in Western Poland right now. All I have to do is click on Eastern Germany, and now they're in Eastern Germany. So the Air Force is one of the easier things to manage. Uh, now there's a couple more things that we're going to go ahead and cover, and we're going to have to switch uh, to another country in order to do so because I would like to look at air carriers real quick. 
All right, welcome back. We are the UK in 1939 here. War is about to start. Now, one thing I want to talk about, and this kind of reminded me, is uh, radar stations. This blue area here is all area that is covered by a radar station. If we were to click on it, we see we have 93% radar efficiency. And radars do two things. One, they give you intel about units in the, the surrounding area. And then the other thing it does is it gives your, your fighters a bonus towards finding other planes, fighters, and bombers in order to attack them. So it's nice to have uh, uh, radar stations and in the area where there's going to be a lot of uh, where the air war is going to be a big focus and remember you can build those very easily by just clicking on here on whatever state you want to build them in and then building a radar station all right let's go back to the air mode now you'll notice here we have one carrier here and they have uh, a symbol kind of similar to the one for our airports and we just click on that to manage our airplanes that are stationed on our air force carriers and you notice this pretty much looks mostly the same as it does for units in a regular airport However, there are a few differences that we need to cover. First of all, 36 to 45. This is the maximum amount of planes that you can have on the deck of this carrier. Now, you can go above that, but you're going to get a penalty for your efficiency. It's really not worth it. You should just kind of stay at that. And we could, of course, as you see, we could increase it. And I already did that here. I uh, went ahead and threw on nine more planes so that we'd get up to our uh, maximum carrying capacity here. Creating air wings is the same. Everything's pretty much the same. However, one thing that may stand out here is this little button here, and we're going to go over this. Now, if this is unchecked, which I want to say default, it is unchecked. I'm not sure, but I want to say that might be the default setting. And let's say you have your airplanes on a carrier uh, performing a, a mission in an area. Now, usually when you're using the aircraft carriers to fight other naval units, you're probably not going to have them doing a mission. And we'll go over that in a second. Uh, but there are cases where you may have them doing an air mission. For instance, if you have your carrier in port here, uh, you may want your planes not just sitting there not doing anything. So you may have assigned them to protect southern England, have your fighters protecting southern England, or having your bombers bomb the Nazis in northern France if they've taken that over, or whatever. Or perhaps you've moved your carrier over to the Baltic Sea and you have them on the hold mission, and then you, you want them to bomb eastern Germany. So you're going to assign your, your airplanes to to the eastern Germany region so they can uh, commence bombing of uh, Berlin or whatever you're trying to do. So if you do have your planes on an air mission and you do not have this checked, then when the carrier leaves that area where the uh, planes can no longer perform their mission, then they're going to leave the carrier, which is a negative. That's not something that you're going to want. So you're going to want to have this thing checked so that air wings will follow the carrier regardless of where they go. I mean, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. Now, when it comes to performing missions against uh, naval units in, in battles, you don't need to do anything. They'll just they'll perform their actions when the battle commences. They'll take off on their planes and they will uh, commence their mission. That's actually considered the mission that they're on. Uh, if you send the carrier out on a mission, then you won't be able to like patrol or something like that. Then you won't be able to assign the fighters on the uh, the carrier to any other missions. And pretty much everything else here is the same. Uh, you do notice this little symbol here telling us that these are the the special planes that I mentioned that you have to have in order to place them on a carrier. Now remember, carriers are very, very powerful because of how powerful naval bombers and just planes in general are. However, remember that your aircraft carriers are very easy to uh, take down. They're very weak and they're pretty much defenseless, so you do want to protect them uh, with uh, an adequate amount of screens as well as probably some other capital ships. They take a very long time to build aircraft carriers, so you do not want to lose them. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for planes. Uh, there's really not as much to them uh, as maybe some naval units or, or land units, I think. And I'm not going to go over paratroopers because I've already done that in a previous video. Uh, and building planes is just like any other aircraft. Um, you know, just select and, and create a, a new air uh, production line for these, these planes. And creating variants is similar to uh, ships or tanks. Same ideal here, uh, except for you're going to be using air experience. Uh, one thing when I should probably mention when you're creating carriers, uh, you can set the default composition of the air wings. So these are the, how they're going to be set up. So you don't have to do that afterwards. Uh, for instance, these are larger carriers. They're carrier threes here. So they're able to carry uh, 70 planes. And it's a, uh, I mean, this is probably pretty good here. Um, 35 fighters and 35 naval bombers. Maybe we want to increase that, decrease the fighter time and increase the naval bombers. All right, guys, that is it. And now that we have finished that theme, we have covered the air units and naval units and army units. If there is anything else that you feel that I need to cover, I have a couple other little things. I don't know if I'm going to do like some kind of like a, just a, a 
just a miscellaneous type video to cover all those little itty th bitty things that don't really uh, fit into one of these kind of categories. Um, for instance, I've had people ask about uh, ground combat, like going into the ground combat screen the way I went into the naval combat screen. Also, production and construction are other things that have been re uh, requested I go into more detail that I haven't yet. Uh, but other than that, I'm kind of feeling like there's not much else to do for these beginner guides, and I'm kind of ready to move on. Like I said, if there is anything else you want me to cover, then I want you to go ahead and sound off in the comments, and maybe we can do just one more of these videos, like a short one to cover all these smaller topics, and just kind of finish this beginner guide thing up. Uh, and then after that, I'd like to move along. Uh, the other th things that I'm planning on doing is I would like, obviously we have the let's play that a lot of people want to want to do a tutorial type let's play so you can I mean you've learned from these videos uh, you know how to do things but you really haven't seen the context of why to do them or when to do them or to see some of the more complex things that you're gonna do uh, uh, during the game also just scenarios that I can't possibly cover in these videos all the different scenarios that may end up coming up during a campaign so these are all things that I want to do in a tutorial type let's play so that's one thing we're gonna do uh, soon in the future and then the other thing that I was thinking about doing is a country guide uh, like an individual country guide for all the major countries or at least some of them uh, just kind of covering the specifics for that country uh, it's things that I really can't go over within these kind of generalized videos so for instance we start with Italy here we'll cover their starting situation everything they have we'll cover the different strategic options that they have like where they can attack and most importantly, uh, I want to cover the uh, national focuses. These things are huge. There's a lot to them. They can be kind of confusing. And there's certain things in each tree that you're not going to want to miss or want to pay special, special attention to. Uh, for instance, the uh, Militia Training Act here for uh, Britain. And each one has little things that you really want to get as soon as possible. And we can also talk about, you know, just other different routes you can go uh, and, and strategies and such. I think it could be useful for people. Um, and I've had a lot of people ask for these. So if you'd like to see some of these, then uh, go ahead and sound off in the comments with that as well. I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on that. Alright guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching guys.